<laughs> Thank you for joining us today. And uh, could you just uh, quickly introduce yourself and tell us a um, um, bit more about yourself? What do you do and what are you about? Yeah, definitely. So I'm Hannah. I started my first business as a virtual assistant whilst on maternity leave. I built that to an agency. I had a team of 10. And then at the start of this year, I rebranded as the content agency. So now we focus on um, marketing. Um, and then off the side of that, I coach new freelancers um, and like women in business who are mums um, to help them build the business of their dreams too. So that's me and what I'm about is um, keeping things simple for one because I grew up with my dad who was a business owner and he was so busy and everything was super complicated and he had no time for friends, family or anything because he was so involved in his business. So I think that's the main thing that I'm about is just keeping things simple across board. Well, amazing. And uh, wouldn't you all agree that we need simplicity in our business? We do. So if you're all about simplicity, sit tight and listen to what Hannah has to share with us. So could you start by telling us a bit more of your story and how did you get into this career? Yeah, definitely. So it was really unexpected, actually, because before this, so my first full time job, I was in car sales, which is completely different to what I do now. Um, I worked there for about a year, had a couple of jobs in between and then went in to become a legal secretary. So I worked as a patent administrator for um, a little while up until I had my daughter. Um, and so one day I was driving to work and I had the worst morning sickness. Don't know if anyone listening can relate to that, but that was horrendous for me. And before that point, I'd never listened to a podcast. So I was listening to a podcast to kind of like try and distract myself from throwing up. Um, and I heard about being a virtual assistant and I just felt like it was the best thing possible because I could use all of the skills that I already had to run a business. And I think that growing up, I was, I did have a lot of like entrepreneurial traits because I recognized those because my dad had them. And, uh, but I wasn't really, really interested about one particular think I don't know if you can relate to that yourself but when starting a business it's really you know everyone's like well just go into something that you're passionate about and I wasn't particularly passionate about anything um so I basically yeah so I set up as a virtual assistant um in 2020 and started the business um with my daughter at home working my part-time job back at the firm and um it was crazy like crazy busy <laughs> um and you know that saying when people are like um i think saying really is like hire before you're ready i feel like when it came to leaving my job i needed to leave before i was ready and that's what i did because it really yeah made me feel uncomfortable and pushed me to go for it like i had no choice but to make it work <laughs> wow. um, yeah so i went into being a virtual assistant and then the majority of what we were doing was helping um service providers and personal brands with their marketing so social media management email campaigns and so at the start of the year i decided to um just rebrand and launch as the content agency which some might say is a really boring company name but it's simple and it just made sense for me so yeah. <laughs> but it does convey what you do, it conveys your brand. Because sometimes I speak to people and they tell me, oh, they kind of tell me their company name and I'm like, blank. It yeah. doesn't convey anything that you do. I can't be like, okay, so tell me more about what you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, yeah, the content agency is just straightforward. So if you need like, if you know you need like content, you have content needs, yeah. If we know um, who to reach, we can always reach Hannah. That's it, yeah. <laughs> so earlier on, you said you, you were all about simplicity because growing up, you saw how your dad was um, was busy and uh, many of his processes were kind of uh, complicated. Um, why simplicity? And what does simplicity mean to you? And why is simplicity so important in business? And these are three uh, questions. But if you want me to rephrase them, I can always do that. Yeah, definitely. So I'll run through them. And if I leave anything out, just call me up on it. Okay. Um, so I think, so the first one was, wait, what was the first one again? <laughs> Why simplicity, what does simplicity, simplicity mean to you? Okay, perfect. So yeah, I guess it just means keeping things simple. That's exactly it. So yeah, just, I think a lot of us can overcomplicate things or a lot of us can probably resonate to this, but the shiny object syndrome where we're like, oh, shiny new thing. Oh, I need to purchase that or need this in my business or need to outsource that or whatever it might be because it looks amazing and in some cases 
they will probably help take your business to the next level, like a new coach or a new system, but not in every single situation. And also, there's a lot of systems out there that do everything. And so when I say keep things simple, I'm, I also don't mean go and find a system that does everything for you because it might not do everything effectively. So it's doing things effectively and looking for what works for you. But I guess simplicity is like different for each person. So for me, I'm very busy. I'm a mum. I run technically two businesses. I um, have a household to look after. I've got a crazy dog. And so if I've got a click in and out of lots and lots of different systems, that's not really ideal for me. So it's it will depend on every person's situation. And I think it's simplicity combined with what is right for you. And I also think that people really do struggle with knowing what's right for them because everyone out there online is sharing what's going on and there's this new big trending workflow or email campaign workflow or whatever it is, a new freebie or ebook or, and it's all getting more complicated and everyone's trying to keep up with things, but it really comes down to like, what is on brand for your brand? And if your brand is a personal brand, does this work for you? Um, so yeah, that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. So I'm why really is it so important? Why is it so important for us to um, uh, simplify our processes in business? Um, so when it comes to processes in business, um... <laughs> that's fine. Um, I'm just going to text her. So to... cute. So sorry. sorry. That's fine. I think she can come and say hello. She's not shy. Would you like to say hello, Isabel? She's currently dressed as Princess Elsa. Oh, so cute. <laughs> She's so brave. <laughs> Hi, Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, You're so cute. cute. Yeah. yeah, off you go. <laughs> Thank you. She did. Thank you. That was amazing. Typical. Guys, this is really beautiful. She's amazing. Just, oh, thank you. Just embrace it. A big shout out to all moms out there and a huge big kisses to all of their children. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy running a business with children. And I'd love to say that it gets easier with time, but I think every new phase has new challenges. Um so yeah. So where was we? Where where was we? So, so we're talking about you're talking about simplicity. And I was talking about where is the place of simplicity in business? And why is it so important important to simplify our business processes? Definitely, because I think in order to grow and scale, you need those business foundations. So if you don't have the foundations and you scale, your business will start to crumble. But before that, you'll get to a point where, so people often set up a business, they'll grow it, it'll get to the point where they're kind of using the old systems and trying to develop new systems, but they're so busy with the work that they have. And it's really important to work on your systems at the beginning but also set time aside during that busy period or invest in someone who can help you to really focus on in your systems for further growth. Because if you don't change at that point, it's going to be really hard to change later down the line. Um, and, and that's why having things done in a simple way or knowing what you're going to do before you get to that step or knowing who's going to help you is going to really help you long term. Because, yeah, keeping things simple like that it's like all you need to know is okay i need to schedule out three days in my calendar for example at that point and this is when it's going to be or how long is it going to take me to get there and when do i need to revisit things like just having a simple plan even to just plan in looking at your whole system again yeah. is the first step i guess so so you can actually simplify your processes by just having like certain things or things on your calendar yeah and making time to review your systems. And then when it comes to actually simplifying, I guess it depends on each business, but I guess you would just look at the amount of work, the type of work, and you know, is the systems that you have in place. For example, when I started my business, I was using Dubsado and it was a system that everyone at the time was using. And it really worked for my freelancer business. But when I moved over to an agency, it wasn't the best system to use. And so if I stayed on Dubsado for too long, as my business grew, it was going to be harder for me to track leads and do all the things that I needed to do. And so at that point, I actually re-looked at my processes, took time out, re-looked at them and decided I'm going to use 
maybe like three to five other systems that do the job of that, but will work for further growth because they can hold more long term, which might seem more complicated, but it depends on everyone's situation. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a, there's a saying that says that rest and reset, you know, and you resting doesn't mean you're being lazy, but you take it a time to reset and recalibrate and just to become clearer on what is your next vision. Is it part Definitely. Of where uh, simplicity um, comes in. And one question I have is how do you help your clients to actually simplify their processes? Okay, so normally we do that within a strategy session. So it'd be like 90 minutes to two hours, depending on what we're looking at. And we'll just sit down and we'll start off by one, making me understand the ins and outs of your business. So depending on what it is, I'll ask about your clients, who your ideal client is, are you working with them? How much you charge, what your package is and all of that. Because without me knowing the full picture of your business would not be able to help. Um, and then from that point, we look at the systems, we look at what they like, what they don't like, as well as what's working. Because there's no point using anything that you just don't like because life's too short. <laughs> and then we go from there and look at what could work and what the plan is moving forward to migrate over to those new systems. So, yeah. Well, that sounds, that sounds really interesting. From your from your from, from your experience, what are the challenges you feel that uh, many business owners go through when it comes to business processes and how uh, to simplify them? Well, I think the biggest one is finances because when you're an SME and you're starting out, even if you have money, you that mindset towards money is not the same as when you've transitioned and you've grown like for example I would now spend x amount of money without questioning it as much whereas at the start I would question every little thing and I think probably a lot of people can relate to that because your money is tight right like at the beginning and you want to hold on to it but actually the mindset when you let go you attract what I find <laughs> when I let go I attract more in um I'm not an expert on money mindset or anything but that's how it's worked for me <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Uh, when you let go, you actually uh, you know, let more in. Yeah, definitely. Like, for example, I'm working with a coach at the minute. And at the beginning, I felt like a bit of resistance because I was like thinking, oh, do I want to spend the money again? We've just made a big change in the business. Should I be holding on to it? Snap myself out of it. I was like, no, I've worked with this lady before. She's brilliant. What am I saying to myself? Worked with her. And I just find that my mind, like I'm in a different headspace because of the like container that I'm in and she challenges me in certain ways that I wouldn't necessarily challenge myself and I've attracted more leads because I'm actively putting in more effort because whereas if I hadn't have done that would my mindset have been the same it's one of those situations isn't it really <laughs> I think I think it's one of the situations where we say um less is more as well when you allow things to go more come into 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 you into your space as well and I think this is something this is something I would say that sounds con I say controversial, but it actually works that way. When you allow things to go and then you don't hold on to things and you just allow the other things, the new things to come in. But just to touch on a bit of what you said today as per how you help your your clients and everything. One question I have is, have you ever, um, what would you say about um, how would I say, how do you handle um, difficult clients? Oh, I love this one because I have so much experience with this. And let me say now, so now that I've got the experience, I'm very good at learning very quickly on a call or when talking to someone if they're going to be ideal for me. But I think that comes down to experience. Like as you have more calls and you get to know more people, you realise who are going to be the right people to work with and who are not. But initially, I think that when it comes to challenging clients, my tips I would give is one, get everything in email because if it's not written down and they come back to you, like you need their word in writing. <laughs> uh, make sure that you have a really good contract to begin with. But if you're in a situation where you've got a challenging client and you've not got those things in place, take a deep breath. <laughs> Think about the bigger picture, like how bad is this really? I'm really sorry, she's gonna start singing. Um, you go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, so just take a deep breath and really think about how big the situation is. Take a step back and don't reply to anything when you're angry 
or in the emotion like take a couple of days to reply if you can because you don't want things to get more heated when you're feeling emotional that's so true these are really these are really really good um, tips so another question i have is what would you say to people who would like to young people who would like to get into this career being a virtual assistant or get it slowly i would say what would you tell young people who want to kickstart their career in this um industry yeah definitely i think i think when it, i mean i'm so passionate about it because when i started my business i was 21 and um, when i started my business i was 21 and i'm now 24 and i wish i could start earlier because i, I don't I, if I, I wouldn't change it because i was a different person to what i was way earlier but if you're thinking about starting a business do it now because yeah don't sit on it like there's no perfect time and if you wait for the perfect time or you wait for yourself to become a different you or something like that like having a business will change you regardless so i would say just yeah make a start and if it's rubbish and the work you're putting out is rubbish just remember that we've all been there my first instagram post was shockingly bad <laughs> <laughs> we'll just archive it like it's not a big deal <laughs> that's true that's so true and i think that's uh, one of the bottleneck um for people who want to start but they're not sure where to start you know they want to start with, if you're not sure where to start start anyway you yeah know, I'll, say, I'll say that just start one thing i would say is find someone that's doing what you like and that's getting the result that you like that you resonate with and follow them and do what they're doing yeah this is it and i think a lot of new young people in business worry about okay financially like do i need an accountant how much is that going to cost me do i need a lawyer to write a contract and all of these different things and i think yeah just start because you'll google the rest that's what i did i just googled it i didn't know anything and i i managed to make friends in business and i asked them along the way so yeah i think the second point would be you know start and make a network and they'll help you out exactly so join people who are doing the things that you're doing people who inspire you and just learn from them be willing to learn be flexible and be adaptable that's what i'm saying i mean this was this was amazing what do you guys say <laughs> you know where you know before we we close up for today where can we you know can people join you can see can they see can they meet, where can they meet you on instagram some of your staff you have a website where can they that learn more about you yeah, so my coaching account is at Hannah Nicole Coach and my content agency account is at content at the content agency limp LTD. At the content well, agency. Well guys, you don't have to remember this. I'm gonna drop it in the description below. You know, on um, uh, below this video you can always connect with um with Hannah if you need um help with content or anything, or if you just want some another um female business owner, if you just wanna hear from her, you know, feel free to get in touch with her. And I hope this was a um, very fruitful time. Guys, don't forget to leave your comments below and let me know if um, there's anything else you'd like us to talk about. I could always invite someone to share light on those topics. But you know what? It is a pleasure having you and Hannah. Thank you for joining us.